Hey everybody, Scott Magoon here coming to you from my studio. This week, Hugo and Miles and I've painted everything. We've been home for a little while now. Are you running out of ideas of what to draw next? Me too. Hugo thinks he's painted everything. Let's see how he figures out what to draw next. Coming up on Scott Studio Storytime. This week's book is Hugo and Miles and I've Painted Everything by Scott Magoon. What happens when a very creative artist runs out of ideas to paint? As in, he's painted everything. Well, we're gonna find out as little Hugo goes to Paris to find inspiration with his friend Miles, where he learns to see things very differently. It's Hugo and Miles and I've Painted Everything by Scott Magoon. In the small city of Cornville, there lived a very creative artist named Hugo. One afternoon, he just finished a painting. That's it, he said proudly as he finished it. I've painted everything. But something was wrong. Hugo looked over his hundreds of paintings. I painted this and that and those and him and her here, there and everywhere, but oh no, I've run out of ideas. Do we ever feel that way like we've painted everything, like we don't know what to paint next because we've painted so much? That's how Hugo feels. So he went to meet his best friend, Miles, for help. They ordered the usual, peanut butter burgers. I have nothing to do, sighed Hugo, because I've painted everything. Hugo, you are in an elephant, said Miles. I'll tell you what, I have very important business in Paris this week as I test one of my inventions. Come with me. You might be inspired to paint something new. I don't know, Miles, said Hugo. It's so far away, I'm not sure. Nonsense. Whenever I go on a trip, said Miles, I think of new things as I see sights I've never seen. You will too. Trust me. So they flew to Paris. They spent days exploring the whole city. In the top left, that's the Notre Dame Cathedral. In the lower left, that's the Champs-Élysées and the Arc de Triomphe, where the little bear is saying, Zut alors! Which means, oh my goodness. And there they are on the merry-go-round in front of Sacré-Cœur. They went to a huge art museum called the Louvre. I've never painted that big, exclaimed Hugo. What if I did? Then your painting would be Hugo Mungus. Hmm, said Hugo. They had a picnic. What if I painted with just one color, asked Hugo. Then you would be Hugo, said Miles. Hmm, said Hugo. They went to the Musée d'Orsay. What if I painted an impression of how I felt? Then you'd be Van Hugo. Hmm, said Hugo. This is kind of a pun on Van Gogh's name. Van Gogh was a famous Impressionist painter. And on the last evening before their last day in Paris, they sat to talk. What if I painted with light? Hugh Glow, Miles said. Oh, Miles, this has been a fun trip, but I'm afraid I still don't know what to paint. Only one thing left to do, said Miles. Go up the Eiffel Tower. The next morning, when they reached the top of the tower, their view of everything changed. Because they were so high up, the city looked entirely different than it had over the past few days. Amazing structure, says Miles. Wow, Paris looks so different from up here, says Hugo. Tons to draw. Suddenly, Hugo looked up and exclaimed, I've got an idea. Miles, we've got to go home, shouted Hugo. But Hugo, no, come on, back to Cornville. They go down the stairs, they take a flight back. What is it? What is your idea? Asked Miles. It's been right in front of my trunk all along, Hugo replied. I painted this and that and those and him and her and it here, there and everywhere. But not from up here, Miles gasped. Wow, Cornville looks so different. Yes, exclaimed Hugo. See, I thought I painted everything, but I haven't. My idea is that I can paint everything all over again only differently. So by Hugo going up and looking at his town and from a different place, it looked different to him, which gave him ideas of new things to draw. 
from here above or here, here below. I can use one color, paint an impression, or use light instead of paint as he paints on his computer. I can change the size so that my canvas is Hugo Mungus, or even very small. And if you look closer, you can see Hugo holding a very small painting. Miles, if I just change the way I look at things, I'll never run out of ideas, said Hugo. And he never did. The end. I hope you like that. What do you say we try a drawing right now, kind of like Hugo did? He's drawing upside down at the end, remember? He's drawing that bowl of fruit as he's standing on his head. We don't have to stand on our head, but what if we draw something once and then turn it upside down and draw it again? That might give us another idea. So in fact, we haven't drawn everything, haven't painted everything. Do you wanna join me? Okay. We're gonna need a piece of paper and you at home can use a pencil or a marker, whatever you would like. Um, I just happen to have a huge pad of paper here you don't necessarily need it, uh, this could be this big, um, just a piece of paper is fine. All right, we're going to draw the same thing twice, but that same thing twice is going to be um, part of one big drawing. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, we're going to take our piece of paper, hold it like this, okay? Dan, am I in the shot pretty well? Yes, you are. Okay, thanks, my cameraman, Dan. Um, thank you, Dan. We're going to draw a line pretty much right down the middle like this. Okay, can you do that? I know you can. Great. Now we're gonna draw. Um, we're gonna draw a nice scene of this little girl as she's put a vase of flowers on the table. Okay, it's gonna be a nice springy drawing, just in time for springtime. Okay, so to do that, we're gonna draw a nice little vase or a pot of flowers for for her to uh, to give the viewer. And to do that, we're gonna draw a nice little like U shape down here at the center bottom center, kind of like this. You see what I'm saying? Like a little U shape there, good. Now we're gonna draw the bottom part of the vase. It's gonna be a slight curve, just like this. Got it? Okay. We're gonna draw another curve like this. Okay. So it should kind of look like a little flower pot down here at the bottom. Okay, good, you got that so far? All right. Next we're gonna draw, um, it's almost gonna kind of look like a cloud, if you will, kind of coming out of the vase. Let me show you what I mean. Um, I'm gonna come up like this, with some spiky things like this, and some nice arcs like that, right? Just like this. You can make up yours as you go along, but something that kind of looks like that. Can you do that? Totally, you totally can. Okay. Next, we're gonna add some flowers in here that match up with this outer line that we've made, okay? And we're gonna have a nice little organized looking uh, arrangement that our character is going to present to the viewer. So watch this, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make like a little flower out of that shape like there, right? I'm gonna make a flower kind of coming out from there, from that shape. This one, maybe we can do this where we've got this happening. See what I'm doing there? Maybe this one is like a little bit of a a rose that hasn't fully bloomed yet, right? We've got some leaves coming out here like this, right? Here we can do like, fill that in a little bit. This one we can do this, right? Here we've got maybe a stem kind of coming down, right? Leaves happening. Right, how are we looking, Dan? Looking good. All right, how's yours looking? I'm sure it's beautiful, I'm sure it's lovely. We can add some leaves kind of coming off the top like this if you want, off the sides like that. So we, the idea is that we've got a nice little arrangement, a little pot of flowers going here, okay? Connect those a little bit like that. Nice, good, okay. We can also add like a nice little pattern. You can make it a polka dot um, pot. You can make it uh, stripes. I think I might make it um, stripey like this. Right, make some nice stripes on it. Decorate it however you want. We can add color later if you want. Well, now it's kind of looking more like a basket, but that's okay, that's all right. Good, right? Okay, we're gonna start the second part of the drawing now, and this is the upside down part. This is gonna be really cool. We're gonna use this same shape that we started earlier, 
right? And we're going to turn it upside down. So our pot is almost becoming, it's going to be a hat. We're going to make a hat. I'm going to spoil it for you and tell you what we're going to do ahead of time. But here's the trick. Um, we're going to draw it upside down first, and then we're going to flip it back over, okay, just to make it a little bit easier. Let's do the same shape that we did before, but see, it kind of looks like a hat now. Let's make it more like a hat here, and we're going to start with the same shape that we did before. Right? Like a little U-shape. Make sure you don't come up too close to this, to this line and you have plenty of space here. Okay? And just like before, I'm going to make a little curved line there. And maybe come up just a little bit more. A curved line here like this. Okay? Right? You got that? Okay. Now here's the trick. We're going to flip it back over like this. And we're going to make a hat out of this. Okay? And we're going to draw a little, little face here. But first, let's do the face. We've got the top part of the hat, and we're gonna come underneath like this and make a nice U-shape like this, nice circular U-shape. That's gonna be our face of our girl, okay? And let's, um, let's draw the hat out like this. Okay, it's like a big U that kind of comes off the side like that. And another big U, you wanna line it up kind of with the bottom line of the brim. It kind of comes out like this, okay? Good. This one's a little bit longer than that one, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, and we're going to add some facial features now. We're going to add some eyes. Some nice circles. Like this. Right? Where I'll do a little nose. I'm going to come down with a line like this, and then a little C shape like that. See? Good. And a smile, which is another C shape like this. And let's have her looking up like she's giving these flowers to somebody. Right? We'll give her some eyelashes too, like this. We can give her some hair as well. Um, let's see, the hair can kind of come down like this. Okay, just some squiggles, kind of come down from the corner like that. You can make the hair however you like. This is just how I'm gonna do the hair. And maybe some hair like this, right? Good. We can give her um, a little neck if we like, like this. Just another U-shape right at the bottom of her chin. And then we're gonna connect it right like this. So it's coming down right to the to this line. That's gonna be like our tabletop, right? Can you see that? Good, good. And I'm gonna decorate the hat just like I did the pot because I wanna connect those two visually to remind myself, oh yeah, I started this whole drawing doing the same shape, just turning it upside down. Right? So it's kind of like a striped hat or a plaid hat. Right. What do you think, Dan? Dan, looks good. Thanks. All right. So there we have it. We have our girl presenting this lovely bouquet of flowers here right as early spring happens um, using the same shape, only flipped upside down. So remember, anytime you can't think of what to draw next, take something you like, flip it upside down, and start drawing something new from it. I hope you like that. I'd love to see your drawings. Send them in to me using the information on your screen right now. And uh, share your drawings with us. We'd love to see them. I'd love to feature your drawings on an upcoming episode. There's some really great and creative activities around Hugo and Miles that I've posted on my website. I'm also going to post a link to the show notes so you can get to them from there. Uh, one is from Pop Goes the Page. And the other one is from the Off the Shelf blog. And both have some really fun uh, activities that you can take a look at. Uh, check them out. Now it's time to answer your questions. Thank you for sending them in. The first question comes from the Brown family. They saw the episode last week about the beluga whale in Breathe, and they wondered, hey, how do whales sleep? It's a great question. Whales are not fish, so they have to come to the surface and get air, uh, just like we do when we uh, swim. But they have to stay awake all night, I guess, to breathe and sleep. So half of their brain, is asleep and half of their brain is awake and it's that sort of special awake asleep uh, state that they can go in that allows them to do both to both breathe and sleep very interesting thank you for your question Brown family our second question comes from Piper and she writes with a question have I ever done a dinosaur book I haven't I haven't done a dinosaur book yet I think that would be a really fun one to do um, 
Uh, the closest dinosaur book that I have done is probably A.W. Flaherty's book, The Luck of the Loch Ness Monster. A lot of people think if the Loch Ness Monster was real, it kind of looked like a plesiosaur, which is a kind of dinosaur. Um, so if you see that book, that's probably the closest I've done uh, to a dinosaur book. Thanks for your question. And in the spirit of sharing, let's share your drawings that you guys have uh, sent on to me. Um, they are incredible. They're all awesome. Uh, let's take a look. Look, I think you'll like them. Here are a couple of them. Love this one. One family sent in these three drawings that they did together. And I just like seeing how three different artists interpret the one uh, scene. Great job. Thanks, guys, for sending that in. Here's one. I love the blue line work here. Really lovely and really aquatic and watery looking. Great job. Thank you for sending that drawing in. I really appreciate that. Keep them coming. Here we've got another whale drawing, and I think a progress in progress drawing there on the left. Great job, guys. Thanks for sending those in. Love it. Two more whale drawings from this family. Again, you can see how two different artists approach the same drawing. I love that. Really interesting to see. And I like the extra addition of the fish, too. Great job. Here's a drawing in progress of Bigfoot from our first episode. Looking great. Love the huge eyes. The big mouth is coming into shape as well. Also like that there's a little snack time available too for hungry artists as they create. Excellent work. Thank you for sending that in. And here we got another beautiful whale drawing using beautiful color on a smaller piece of paper. Really, really well done. Thank you so much for sending in these drawings, everybody. Please share your drawing from this week or any drawings you want to share with us. I'd be happy to show them on the show uh, with our viewers. That's all the time we have for this week. Please like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell. And it lets me know you're out there. You can find all of my Scott Studio story times and much more about my books on my website at scottmagoon.com. We're going to try to do new episodes every Wednesday. I hope you'll tune in and tell all your friends about our show. Um, we really love your support. Um, and we're glad to know that you're out there. So please be in touch. Uh, that's all for now. I'll see you next time from Scott Studio Storytime. In the meantime, stay safe, healthy, wash those hands. Stay safe, everybody. So long for now. <laughs>